Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you today? This is Dr. Annette and I am here talking about sweeteners and ketosis. So how frequently do people tell you that um, different sweeteners can cause problems when you're trying to be in a state of ketosis? I know that um, it's a common question. People ask it a lot. And my goal is to give you as much information as I possibly can to help you make decisions based on your health and um, how you can most, most benefit from those things. So today the topic is, I put it in the, in the comments here, erythritol, monk fruit, and stevia. So my, my question is to a lot of people, like which ones do you use? And um, which ones do you find the most beneficial? Um, so have you practiced using like monk fruit? Have you used erythritol? Have you done any um, different like testings in your own kitchen to see which ones you prefer? Is there one that you prefer over another? And I actually have a little poll here. We can um, publish so you can see it. Which keto sweetener is your favorite? So stevia, erythritol, monk fruit, or something else. If you found something else that you think works better, let us know. Now, I'm fully aware that there are stevia mixed with other types of sweeteners, like there's a stevia and erythritol mixtures. Um, Truvia is one of my favorite because one of the side effects of erythritol is that it leaves that cooling effect. So sometimes I prefer not to have that in a recipe that I'm doing, but um, stevia doesn't tend to do that. So a lot of times I'll use something that mixes erythritol and stevia together because I prefer the taste of erythritol to the taste of stevia. And I've honestly not tried monk fruit, mostly because um, the information that I've had about monk fruit is that it raises your insulin. So this morning I decided to do a little bit of research and I put some studies over in the comments or down in the comments of this depending on which device you're watching this on to help you understand um, if you're that kind of a scientific person um, to help you um, get the information in a, in a more concise manner than me rambling on about it here on Facebook so but if you are interested in learning more about these things it's really easy to find more info all you have to do is actually just like Google it and this website that's mentioned in my um, in my uh, comments over to the side here. Sorry, I'm trying to share this into my group. Um, also, there we go. So um, if you look here at the studies, so erythritol did not affect serum levels of glucose. So that's great and all of these sweeteners are going to tell you that they don't increase serum levels of glucose which is fabulous but glucose isn't the only part of the puzzle and that's where a lot of people get confused or distracted right because uh, glucose is just part of the puzzle glucose has to have insulin to do its job glucose alone can't do anything to help your body if you don't have insulin the problem is you don't need insulin floating around in your body if you don't have sugar in your body. So if you're eating a ketogenic lifestyle and you're choosing not to have carbohydrates or things that have sugar in them, then guess what? You don't need a sweetener that's going to increase your insulin levels, right? Because insulin is inflammatory when it's running around in your body and doesn't have a job. So if there's no sugar present, then insulin doesn't need to be there. So let me know what your favorite type of sweetener is by choosing one from the list there. And if you're watching this on the replay, just comment in the comment section because you won't be able to see the poll. Stevia, erythritol, monk fruit, or something else. And I don't care if you spell it right because erythritol is hard to spell. <laughs> it's a complicated word to spell. So just tell me what your favorite sweetener is and the reason why you like it over another one. So erythritol does not affect serum levels of glucose. Yay! It also doesn't increase insulin or other serum constituents, which means that it passes through for the most part. 90% of the erythritol that you take in literally goes back out in urine. It only has 0.4 calories per gram. So it's not going to raise the calories of your favorite dish. 
It's not going to change anything like that. It's not going to increase your insulin, which is what my main concern is when I'm talking about health for people because insulin is inflammatory. Of course, it is necessary. Don't get me wrong. that You, you do want insulin in your body. Sorry, I'm thirsty. You do want insulin in your body, but you only want the, the amount of insulin you need to get the job done. Sorry about that. Um, so you only want the amount of insulin you need to get the job done. So if you don't have any sugar floating around in your system, any glucose, then insulin is not necessary. So why use a sweetener that increases your insulin levels, right? So if you are um, using monk fruit, it um, I tried to find a study where it like spelled out exactly how much insulin monk fruit raises but I couldn't really find anything specific. I just found that it says it, it raises it to some degree, but I'm guessing they haven't done enough research yet. That article that I listed there is um, something you can go take apart piece by piece if you'd like to. I um, did not take the time to like break it down and, and like really, really, really piece it apart, but monk fruit does not raise blood sugar either, but it does raise insulin to some degree. So if you're using monk fruit in a recipe that also has some things in it that might spike sugar a little bit, it has like some carbohydrates or some glucose in it, then monk fruit would be fantastic to use because it does encourage the use of insulin by your body. So like I said, you only want insulin to be activated if you have something for it to do, right? Because insulin has two main jobs. Its first job is to get sugar into the cell. And its second job is to store whatever sugar doesn't get into the cell as fat. So you don't really want insulin floating around in your body if you don't have sugar to utilize. Um, stevia, which is another common sweetener that's very low carb, stimulates insulin secretion only in the presence of high glucose concentrations. So stevia does not raise insulin. It does not raise blood sugar. It does not cause any kinds of issues in the like the blood measuring part of it but some people do struggle with stevia a little bit because it, it bothers their gastrointestinal tract which is why um, mixing stevia with another sweetener like truvia might be beneficial for some people some people don't tolerate it well at all but like i said earlier personally i prefer to mix stevia and erythritol together because i don't like the cooling effect of erythritol in all of my recipes so I um I do make some things that use powdered erythritol in them, and you can definitely tell that you're using the cooling effect of the erythritol in the recipe. So um, if Truvia has a confectioner's version, I might have to try that. I haven't looked for that yet because, or maybe I need to just find um, a powdered stevia that I can mix with my erythritol to make it more tolerable for me. The the um the recipe that I have in my keto group for the chocolate lava cake utilizes an erythritol, a powdered erythritol sugar substitute, and you can definitely tell that it has a um, cooling effect in that recipe. So if you want that recipe, you have to join the group. So go click on my keto lifestyle group. It's in the comments as well to get into that group. So Bonnie says erythritol is in a lot of recipes and that's why she uses it. So she's not done the research, but she's found that it's a common one that's in recipes. So that's why she uses it. So that's a pretty awesome reason. Um, and let's see. Oh, she's asking which one is the best. She tries not to eat real sugar at all unless it's snuck into some food. So yeah, I mean, sugar is typically like sugar in general is not typically snuck into foods as much as high fructose corn syrup, which I know a lot of people say that high fructose corn syrup is natural and it doesn't um, react any differently in your body, but that is not true. And high fructose corn syrup does raise insulin and things like that. So it is snuck in to a lot of recipes and to a lot of pre-packaged foods. So you really, really, really have to read labels if you want to be effective at a ketogenic lifestyle. I prefer to make most of my food and not use things out of a box as frequently as possible, but I prefer the stevia or erythritol over monk fruit, mostly because I've heard in the past that um, monk fruit does raise insulin. And my specific goal is to avoid raising my insulin because raising your insulin, it causes inflammation and it also kicks you out of ketosis. 
Glucose will also kick you out of ketosis, but if you spike your insulin, it kicks you out of ketosis as well. So you want to make sure that you're keeping your insulin levels as low as possible and allow your body to do what it does in the best, most efficient manner. So if you've been concerned about what kind of sweeteners to use, that's definitely something to consider. And I'm also interested in how many times a day do you eat something sweet? Is it, um, is it zero to two times a day? Is it three to five times a day? Is it more than five times a day? Because what I find when I eat something sweet, um, even if it's a low calorie, low carb sweetener, sometimes that activation of my sweet tooth makes me interested in having something else from sweet stuff. So um, if you're eating sweet stuff, here's the deal. If you eat something sweet, even if it's low carb and low calorie, and it spikes your desire to eat another sweet thing, then you should probably try to avoid eating sweet stuff, even if it's low calorie, low carb, because your body hasn't switched over. You haven't gotten rid of that craving yet for sweet stuff. And it's only a matter of time before your body like talks you into, whoops, I accidentally published that post. It's only a matter of time before your body talks you into uh, eating something that's uh, sweeter than what you had thought it should be, right? So something with actual sugar in it. So you kind of have to know your own body. Doing the keto lifestyle the way I do it requires you to be a little bit more aware of what you're doing, requires you to pay a little bit of attention. Of course, I do have my keto drink that helps me stay in ketosis all the time, but in order for me to feel great, because I have had past issues with inflammation and joint pain and fatigue because of my health issues that I personally have, my um, therapeutic level of ketones helps me with, um, I don't walk like a, a duck when I get out of bed in the morning, as long as I'm in a state of ketosis when I wake up. If I'm not in a state of ketosis when I wake up in the morning, it takes me a few minutes to get going. It takes me a while to get to the bathroom because my joints uh, aren't working the way they should. So I really, really prefer to use, um, to be in a state of ketosis when I wake up in the morning. Hey, Bonnie, this is raspberry lemonade nat, which is, um, it's a ketone drink. It has ketones in it. So it puts you in a state of ketosis immediately. I just spilled it on myself and helps you stay in a state of ketosis for four to five hours after drinking it, as well as um, it can also help put you in a state of ketosis and keep you there. And if you eat properly, you can stay in ketosis uh, for a much longer period of time. But the reason I like it so much is because it's a therapeutic level of ketones more than you can get in your body just by doing a straight ketogenic diet alone. And it allows me to have a more flexible lifestyle as far as diet. And I don't have to sit around and just stuff in MCT oil and coconut oil and fat to try to stay in a state of ketosis. So it makes it much easier to stay in a state of ketosis. That's why I drink that drink. So hopefully this information was very helpful. If you know somebody that struggles with trying to figure out why to use different sweeteners or what sweeteners to use, please invite them to watch this video. And Bonnie, you can get this drink through me. Um, you can also go to um, my website, askdrannette.com, or I can send you the link, which I will do when I get off of here, if you'd like more information. So um, please, please, please share this with people if you think that they might find benefit and information about the stevia, the monk fruit, the erythritol, or how they can get their hands on that drink. I'm going to have to go have a chat with Bonnie. So I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope this information was helpful. I'm Dr. Annette, and I love to help people just like you feel amazing and have the energy to do the things that they love to do with the people they love to do it with and create a thinner, more energetic, healthier you for the new year. I hope you're having a great week.